Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, C919 finally completes first flight. DJI offers major reward to ID flight interfering drone pilots. Gamma, the fiscal year 2017 omnibus spending bill, generally good for aviation. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson, it's May 9th and this is Airborne Unlimited. The Chinese-built C919 made its first flight last Friday following a three-year delay. The aircraft was to have originally flown in 2014, but production and other issues continually delayed the milestone. Still, Comac, the state-owned company manufacturing the C919, is hopeful that the Chinese airliner will one day be competitive with a single-aisle aircraft from Boeing and Airbus. The initial flight of the C919 lasted about 80 minutes. It flew over the Yangtze River Delta where it performed several maneuvers before returning south along the coast to land back at Shanghai International Airport. The plane flew at an altitude of about 10,000 feet at speeds up to 161 knots. A letter from China's ministerial cabinet was read after the plane landed. The cabinet called the first flight a major breakthrough in the country's passenger jet industry. The first flight went smoothly and all systems functioned as designed, according to the Minister of Industry. Comac began work on the C919 in 2008, and many years of flight testing may lie ahead for the certification in China, let alone the U.S. and Europe. It was six years between first flight and Chinese certification for the country's first indigenous airliner, the ARJ-21. After several incidents involving drones near Chengdu Shanglu International Airport in the southwestern province of Sichuan in China, drone maker DJI is offering a reward of up to 1 million yuan or about $145,000 for information about the pilot or pilots in the incidents. The incidents occurred on April 14th, 17th, 18th, and 21st. Drones flying near the airport reportedly interfered with more than 100 flights. As many as 10,000 passengers were reportedly affected. Since the first of the year, there have been some 15 reported cases of drones flying near airports in China. In 2016, there were 23 for the entire year. We hope to help the police solve these cases as soon as possible to clear up the unnecessary misunderstanding about the drone industry, said Wang Fan, Director of Public Relations for DJI. DJI at first said their geofencing software would have prevented their drones from being involved in their incidents near airports. But after an investigation, the company acknowledged that the drones in question were in fact DJI aircraft. They said that a third-party app was likely used to allow the operators to get around the geofencing system. Police have detained two men in connection with the incidents. After the break, Gamma likes some funding aspects of recent legislation. In collaboration with NASC, introducing Sonics Aerospace, bringing you the Taros Group 4 UAS, the redesigned Tiger Shark Block 4, and the Subsonics Twin Jet UAS, all derived from flight proven manned systems, not concepts, real aircraft. More at sonicsaerospace.com. Let Patrick Neal and Associates provide the legal expertise needed to navigate the commercial UAS industry. Whether it be waivers, exemptions, operational plans, or other issues, we can provide the guidance you need to keep flying and building your successful UAS operation. www.droneattorneys.us Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. The fiscal year 2017 omnibus spending bill passed last week by the U.S. Congress provides key funding for general aviation manufacturers in safety, certification, and alternative fuels, according to analysis from Gamma. The bill, which now heads to President Trump for his signature, will fund the U.S. government through September 30, 2017. 
The bill provides $1.29 billion for aviation safety activities, including $1.5 million of that amount for six additional full-time equivalent positions to support the certification of new technologies. The measure also directs the FAA to work with industry to improve the effectiveness of product certification, including fuller utilization of organization designation authorization. Additionally, the measure emphasizes the importance for FAA to continue to strengthen international aviation safety cooperation and improve the flow of aviation products globally through strategic engagement with the EASA, Transfer Canada Civil Aviation, and the National Civil Aviation Agency of Brazil. These efforts should leverage the respective safety competencies of bilateral safety partners to streamline validations of products and reduce burdensome and duplicate work by regulatory specialists. The bill also provides $7 million for NextGen, alternative fuels for general aviation, $1.2 million more than the request. Every Tuesday, we're going to look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here's this week's Aero Calendar. It's never too early to plan for Oshkosh, which is coming up faster than ever. Of particular importance and serious coolness are the range of airshow acts and performers on the roster for Air Venture 2017. Some of the world's top airshow performers, including national aerobatic champions, longtime favorites, the United States Navy Blue Angels, and some talented Oshkosh first timers, have made commitments to fly during the afternoon and night airshow lineups at EAA Air Venture Oshkosh 2017. Set for July 24th through 30th at Whitman Regional Airport in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Afternoon air shows are scheduled to begin at 2:30 p.m. daily, while the Wednesday and Saturday night air shows are scheduled to begin at 8 p.m. This is just a partial list with many more exciting performers yet to be announced in the coming weeks leading up to Oshkosh. Aeroshell aerobatic team Vicky Benzing, Jeff Booerboom, Bob Carlton, Kirby Chambliss, Matt Chapman, Class of 45, Kevin Coleman, Kyle Franklin, Matt Golian, Rob Holland, Jerry Gerby, Greg Kuntz, Sammy Mason, Paul McCowan, United States Navy Blue Angels, Paradigm Paramotor aerobatic team, Jim Pates, Redline Air Shows, Gene Soucy, and Teresa Stokes. Bill Stein, Skip Stewart, Sean D. Tucker, Patty Wagstaff, Matt Yonkin, and Scott Yoke. After these messages, Jeppesen and Forflight partner up. Continental Motors Group. Manned and unmanned, Continental has been a pivotal part of aviation and aerospace history and wants to be a part of your mission. Gas or diesel, certified or experimental, Continental is investing in your future www.continentalmotors.aero There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Jeppesen and Forflight have announced that the companies have entered into a long-term strategic alliance to combine their capabilities and content. Together, Jeppesen and Forflight will build on their common heritage of delivering data and software to pilots and flight operations. This alliance builds upon Jeppesen's major new release of Jeppesen's Flight Deck Pro, which is being deployed worldwide. China Southern Airlines has signed a purchase agreement with Airbus for 20 A350-900s, becoming the latest customer for the aircraft. The carrier now operates one of the largest Airbus fleet in the world, with more than 300 Airbus aircraft in service, comprising the A320 family, the A330 family, and five A380s. NAV Canada has completed a successful flight test of space-based ADS-B technology. 
The test was conducted to collect ADSB data used for validating Ariane satellite aircraft surveillance and tracking service. The flight utilized a specially equipped Bombardier aircraft with both top and bottom mounted 125 watt ADSB antennas. It was the first of two scheduled flight tests. In testimony before the Senate, Commerce Committee Sharon L. Pinkerton, Senior Vice President for Legislative and Regulatory Policy at Airlines for America, said that carriers are listening to the traveling public and taking action to improve the travel experience for every passenger who takes to the skies. In her testimony, Pinkerton addressed the recent unacceptable failures in customer service and how the U.S. airline industry is ready to deliver on its responsibility to implement meaningful solutions to ensure such incidents never happen again. Air France KLM has selected Rockwell Collins to provide its visual systems for a new Boeing 787 Dreamliner simulator and upgrades to their existing flight training devices. The Rockwell Collins systems include the industry-leading EP8100 image generator, laser-illuminated projectors, and a panorama collimated display. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The Colorado Aviation Business Association has announced that the Support Colorado Aviation License Plate Bill has passed through the 2017 Colorado Legislative Session. The Support Colorado Aviation License Plate Project has been a collaborative effort by numerous Colorado aviation organizations. In late 2016, the petition for the plate exceeded the required 3,000 signatures and moved forward in the legislative process. The bill was sponsored by Representative Rosenthal, Representative Sias, Senator Kagan, and Senator Gardner. In keeping with the theme of Colorado aviation, even the plate design was put out to the aviation artists in the state. Ultimately, it was Chris Glazer, a graphic designer with Jefferson and Inglewood, who presented the winning design. Chris Swathwood, a member of the Cabot Board of Directors, who initiated and led the plate project, explained, We felt the design really encompassed aviation in the state. The runway for all aviation professionals in non-flying roles, then each aircraft helping to highlight a different aspect of aviation in the state and the pilots that fly them. The goal of the plate bill is to raise awareness of the huge impact that aviation has in the state of Colorado and how aviation affects a multitude of Colorado industries. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow. Thank you.